Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Brothers and sisters, I hope you're well So we're basically starting off or continuing the LDM show But it's no longer called the LDM show We're basically renaming the show to the GDM show Which is the Global Dao Movement show Because we realize that it's no longer only about London or the UK You know, this movement spreading, spreading globally uh, we have to deliver this message globally and we want all of you involved, inshallah. So from now on, it's called the Global Dawah Movement Show and we're kicking off with an amazing new episode with Brother Sabur. Salam alaikum, Brother Sabur. How are you? I'm good. You good? Mashallah. Nice to see you again. Yes. And I see you've lost some hair as well. Mashallah. Yeah, I just um, just came back from Umrah. Mashallah. So, you know, a very mashallah. spiritual high. In mashallah. Excellent. And you've come straight into the show today then to discuss something very interesting, which is Richard Dawkins. Uh, yes. All the things we could have discussed. The first comeback show is to do with Richard Dawkins, right? And it's to do with a particular claim that he made on a particular show, sure. right? Which was, uh, he spoke to the interviewer and he said to him, you believe that Muhammad flew on a winged horse to heaven, right? He said this. Do you actually believe in your Muslim faith? Do you believe that Muhammad split the moon in two? Do you believe that Muhammad flew to heaven on a winged horse, for example? I, I pay you the compliment of assuming that you, that you don't. No, I do. I believe in miracles. You believe that? Yes. You believe that Muhammad went to heaven on a winged horse? Yes, I believe in God. I believe in miracles. I believe in revelation. Okay, as you guys have seen the clip by Richard Dawkins and what he said, so talk to us then. What do you want to, what do you want to tell us about this? Okay, let, let's dissect this video firstly, right? The way he speaks about this particular incident is as if it's almost like believing in fairies or believing in, I don't know, uh, Snow White or Cinderella. It's just, he, he thinks of it as something so ridiculous, so difficult to imagine that somebody would actually believe this. And you can see his tone, right? If you watch that video, his tone is a very mocking tone. It's yes. a very, you know, like... Oh, you don't believe that, do you? Yeah. So what we're going to dissect about this is firstly for him and for other atheists out there, why we believe this thing to be an absolute fact, why we, we believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went up to heaven on a winged creature, and why we believe that this is completely rational. And it's not like a belief like Cinderella or Shrek or whatever they make it out to be. Right. Now the first thing to understand is that we believe in a creator, Yes. right? That's a totally rational belief because we've done this in many, many shows. We've explained why this camera it's cannot come together by chance. Yeah, it's all there. has to have a creator, right? It's all there. Now, if you have this thought in your mind that you have this creator who's made everything, mm -hmm. right? Now, this creator can surely create things that you don't know or create things that you don't understand. And he can rearrange creation. Yeah. So the same creator who has made a sun and made the earth and made the moon and made all these connected entities and has created us in such a way that our eyes are more complicated than the most complicated cameras. Can this creator not create a, 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 a creature that flies and has wings? So effectively what you're saying is that once you come to the conclusion that the creator exists and everything else logically follows. Anything, the creator could do what he wills basically. Yes, yeah, because yeah, anything is possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. That's the first point that we believe in a creator who's able to do all things. But then the second point is why do we believe this actual incident happened? Right? And it's because we believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah. So the first thing we spoke about is why it's rational to believe in Allah. Yeah. The second thing is why it is rational to believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah. Mm. And if these two things, the fact that Allah exists and the fact that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah, if these can be rationally explained, then anything which is said in the Quran is logical because the two foundations, which is that Allah exists and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah, or in otherwise, in Arabic we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger. If these two foundations hold, then everything that we know in the Quran, we believe is true. So when the Quran talks about ants talking, which we now know there's scientific evidence that ants talk, we know to be true because of these two foundations. Yeah. So for an atheist like him, when he attacks, well, how can you believe that he went up to heaven on a winged horse? He should attack these two foundations because we base all of our Islamic beliefs yes. on these two yes. 
foundations. So what you're saying is nonsensical to attack anything that precedes these foundations once these foundations are established. Yeah. So once they make sense, anything that follows, it, it logically falls into place. There, there's no need for mocking. Yeah. Right. So what you're effectively saying is, if this makes sense, if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala exists, which we know there is absolutely no doubt about it, and if we know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is His messenger. Then we can believe in miracles, we can believe in winged creatures, we can believe in heaven and hell, all of these things. And, make and sense. it's rational, this is the important thing yeah. to know. And it's rational because if I was to say to you 500 years ago that trees talk to each other, you'd say I was bonkers, I was mad, mm. right? But we now have scientific evidence that trees actually communicate with each other. Yes. So there's things which are bizarre in nature, yeah. which are hard for us to understand, but they exist in reality. Mm. And in the same way, we as Muslims, we believe in the seen world. And we also believe in the unseen, unseen world, yes. but we don't. It's not just like a. It's just not just like a made-up belief, which is based on like Christianity, say, right? Yes. It is something based on evidence. We have evidence, good rational reasons to believe in a creator, yeah. good rational reasons to believe the Quran is a divine book. Yes. Therefore, anything that comes from there, you shouldn't just attack that thing. Yes. You should go back to the foundation and try and challenge them. And the thing which, if, if he finds it really difficult to believe in a creator and a creator that can create a winged horse, yeah. he should find it even more difficult to believe that this whole universe came together by chance. Yeah, and that, that's what you would expect from a, an academic, is to be a bit more nuanced, be a bit more refined and a bit more civilized when you approach these subjects, you know, instead of just mocking it outright, which is clear, you know, you can clearly see this is what he does from not only this clip, but several other clips are online. And obviously, he goes into another discussion about his agenda and he, what he wants to achieve, and it just it just it just discredits him, if anything. But I think that's a very beautiful point that you made, is that the claims of miracles, the claims of winged creatures, any supernatural claims, claims that are beyond the physical, instead of attacking those, go back to the foundations. What are the presuppositions for a Muslim to believe these things, which yeah. are Islam, the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the Prophet If these things make sense. And we can justify these things, then everything else logically follows, and there's no problem with anything. Exactly. If I'm correct. And Jazakallah here for watching. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.